Bob. Hi, Dr. Zahn. So today I like to talk about interesting. I find out when I came back from China and uh, my friend told me a group of Chinese doctors in Shanghai trying to get rid of Chinese medicine, including acupuncture and herbs, which has 5,000 years history. And I was shocked because I know Blue Cross Blue Shield started covering acupuncture for pain and World Health Organization already listed more than 40 medical conditions acupuncture can help. Um, and you told me how many countries accept uh, well, acupuncture? I'm, I'm sure most countries, uh, you know, most uh, countries uh, accept it and endorse it uh, for certain uh, conditions. Uh, so it's not just Chinese and Japan that are having this conflict. Uh, other countries endorse it. They've tried it for many years and it helps their population so they use it. Yes, and I heard some Jewish people told me in Israel, government cover acupuncture. Um, and uh, my uh, hospital where I used to work for six years before I came to USA, um, they actually have a uh, affiliation with the hospital in German and we send a nurse we send doctors there um, to practice acupuncture and Chinese herbs and not only that a lot of research for instance acupuncture for infertility acupuncture for PCOS and acupuncture for knee pain a lot of research have been done in Europe to verify acupuncture is very effective treatment regarding herbs there are a lot of research which published in very good journal they verify herbs are effective in treating different kind of condition the only problem with herbs is because it's a formula there are more than five to ten herbs together so it's hard to standardize and that's the problem but as a chinese descendant I use herbs for all my life because I am super sensitive to any kind of medication. I could have any kind of side effect if I took any medication. So I don't usually take high dosage or long term. I take short term. Medication save life. And you took medication, right? But acupuncture help you with your knee after surgery, with your back. How did you get into acupuncture? Well, I think at first, uh, once when I got to know you, uh, I was ha going to have shoulder re replacement and at what they call reverse shoulder replacement. And you wanted to prepare me uh, for the pain. I had a lot of swelling, a lot of inflammation in this shoulder, my right shoulder. And you wanted to prepare me for the surgery. And I remember my surgeon mentioning that there, that there was a lot less inflammation that he saw at the time of the surgery that made the surgery go better and my recovery. I also used acupuncture after my surgery and my recovery was, was much faster. So that kind of got me to look into how could I use acupuncture for other medical problems and uh, diseases that I might have had over my long life. So you have full motion range now in the right shoulder, oh, sure. right? Yeah. yeah. And right now you don't have the pain, but you still need to be careful not torn your muscle, right? Well, I still the need joint. to exercise it you yes. know, to keep the so muscles working. You combine a PT and acupuncture and you get the best result. And you know, like now, uh, Veteran Hospital also started covering acupuncture for mm -hmm. veterans they do. right yeah. so it's not only for the pain but also for ptsd for other medical condition depression um, so i think you know not only american country but also european country european actually has longer history to endorse acupuncture it has been there for over 200 years and in america since 1972 if acupuncture and herbs are not working and initially everybody has to pay out of their own pocket 
and then why people want to pay for it? Because it's working. You don't want to somebody stuck needles in your or take the nasty herb and just because it's for fun, there's no fun, but you feel better afterwards. Just like you do exercise, you know, you make effort, you take that one minute of nasty taste herbs, you phlegm, clear up, you don't have to cough in front of the camera, right? Yeah, most of the herbs that I've taken in the past or am taking now, I, I put it in with a tea or, a, you know, a juice or anything that it will dissolve in and I can mix well, even just warm water. Uh, I don't find it, uh, you know, distasteful. You know, I mean, it's like, you know, when you're, when you're young and they give you cod liver oil and they tell you to take it, you know, I take it, but uh, and then, I, I, I don't feel it's distasteful. Yeah, I think anything, I mean, this modern society, we have so many chronic conditions. If we can save countries money, make people healthier, happier, I think we shouldn't discard Chinese medicine. Do you agree with me? Oh, I agree. And I also realized that uh, I couldn't talk to my primary care doctor about the use of acupuncture. I have to go out and search this on my own because a medical doctor is going to stick to opioids. They're going to stick to drugs or anything that the pharmaceutical company makes that will help their patients. But sometimes they don't look at the long term and side effects but I have never had uh, a primary care doctor or any medical doctor that I've talked to recommend uh, Chinese acupuncture or herbs, where through my knowing you, I've tried many of these things and gotten better results with less side effects. I think probably in your area, the, the, the PCP still not recommended, but I treated many doctors in Boca Raton. I have ER doctor, I have a, a neurologist, I have urologist, a different kind of medicine, medical doctor, when they have enough experiences to see, you know, it's limited with one treatment method. They would recommend, I have kidney failure patients, and they, they came and for acupuncture, and for herbs. I think that verifies that even many open-minded Western medical doctor in America or in Europe, they accept that. So I hope Chinese doctors, they are going to be continue to be open-minded to save this 5,000 years treatment method for Chinese people and for other countries. Thank you.